Welcome to this Football Manager 2020 experiment where I've created the world's most perfect manager using the Football Manager editor. And what we're going to do in this experiment, as you can tell from the video title, is we're going to stick him at a non-league club in England and we'll see how he performs and see how the club that he manages performs. Now this follows on from my last two experiments where I created perfect players. Mr. Perfect, that's what he was called. He's going to be called Mr. Perfect in this experiment as well. If you've missed those experiments, go and check them out first. But the most popular comments really in those experiments, during those experiments, was for me to create a perfect manager. So this is the experiment that you guys want. Say hello again to Mr. Perfect. But this time we're in a parallel universe where he's Spanish, born in Madrid. As you can see, he's got perfect attributes on everything. He could be any staff member he wants to be, but he only wants to be a manager, really, as you can see there. He's even got 20 on physiotherapy and sports science. He's a model citizen, although I don't know if that's really a good thing for a manager. You want them to beat up the players a bit if necessary, don't you? Now, tactical style Gagin Press, I fiddled around with his attributes, or sort of, sort of his tactical attributes, and I thought Gagin Press would be the best thing for a modern day manager. Uh, preferred formation, that's decided by the game. So we'll see how he gets on with that. It might not be the best thing. Now he's got a five year, six year. No, actually, I gave him more than a six year contract. I gave him a contract until 2099 to try and make him stay there and not be sacked. Because you can't do the future transfer thing with a manager. You can only do it with players. So I don't know. Will they sack him? Won't they have to pay huge amounts of compensation? I. I Maybe not. Maybe it would just be sort of like a year's wages. Not sure how it works. Now, in this first attempt, and I say first attempt because there's going to be more than one attempt during this video. His first attempt at his career, he's starting at Kettering in the National League North. We did the National League South for Mr. Perfect the Player. I thought it made sense to do National League North. And we've moved him to Kettering because they're predicted to finish bottom of the table. We want to give him a bit of a challenge to start with and see how much of an impact he can have on this club. So without further ado, let's simulate the first season. Not bad, Mr. Perfect. Fifth place, considering you're meant to finish bottom, that is not bad at all. They got into the playoffs, but unfortunately, they were defeated in the semi-final. They got through the first round. In the, in the second round, they lost against York City, as you can see there. So he's had a, a positive impact at the club. He signed plenty of players, lots of players on a free. I know this guy, 30-year-old left-back from Bury on a free. Uh, a few other players coming in from Football League teams, as you can see. There. This is the, the squad that you had to play around with. Not a huge amount of money at Kettering. I don't know. Their finances are okay. One-star reputation. Facilities-wise, 2,800-seater stadium or capacity stadium, 450 seats. But he's done okay in that first season. However, in the second season, not so good. Tenth place. Not too bad, but outside the playoffs. Went back a step. Uh, so, as you can see, he's not had like a dramatic impact. A player has more control over the proceedings of a club, it seems. This is just the first attempt. I'm going to do it. I've already done a second and third attempt at this, which makes you realise that, yes, it's not gone to plan for Mr. Perfect in his, in his first management position. Uh, but he still had overall a fairly positive impact on the club. But yeah... It's not like he's going to win the table. He's not won the league, basically, in his first attempt at management. He doesn't have the resources. You can have the most perfect manager, but if you don't have the resources, then it's going to be tricky. That's the first first bit of analysis, anyway. Maybe, maybe we'll see some positive things later on in the video. It's June 2022, and Mr. Perfect is unemployed. It has not gone to plan. I already alluded to that, but yes, it has not gone to plan for him at Kettering. Uh, so he was sacked at the end of this third season after they finished ninth. Which I think is a bit harsh considering in the first season they were predicted to finish bottom. Maybe they expect more of him because he's a perfect manager. He's got perfect attributes and the expectations are higher. I don't know. I mean, he's signed plenty of players. He's, he's certainly strengthened the team, I think, overall. Uh, but it just didn't go to plan for him in this third season unfortunately. But we're going to give him another go at Kettering. I'm going to start again. You may have learned at school that with experiments, science experiments, you're meant to do them more than once. Three times is always a good good indicator of things. So that's what I'm applying to the football manager experiment here. 
Now, I've made him younger this time because I did actually mean to make him a young manager to start with, but I forgot to put his date of birth in for the first attempt at this. So now we've made him born in 2000, so he's only 19 years old. But I think that makes it interesting. A really young manager, didn't become a player, maybe got injured, could have become the most perfect footballer ever, but he suffered from a horrible injury in his youth and decided to go into coaching. And he's become the greatest ever manager in terms of attributes. But his reputation is very low. He's got that Continental Pro license. So at the age of 19, that's very impressive. Anyway, we put him back at Kettering. We're going to give him another go and see what happens. So he's finished 11th in his first season this time around, which is actually worse than the first attempt, interestingly. So not a great season for Mr. Perfect, but yet again, he's finished above where he was meant to finish. Interestingly, he's made, I don't know if they're exactly the same signings, you might want to go back and have a look, but they're, they're pretty similar. We'll continue. Oh, he's changed his preferred formation in this one as well, because I guess the game just randomly decides. 4-4-1-1, doesn't seem particularly attacking. Well then, second season, the end of the second season, Mr. Perfect is nowhere to be seen at Kettering. He has been sacked again. And he was sacked pretty early on in the season, September 2020. The new man came in and, to be honest, has not done well either. They have been relegated. So arguably, the second manager's done worse. Unless Mr. Per oh, he did have a terrible start to the season. Look at that. That's awful. So he was sacked around about here. I think he'd won like one game in the league. So that's not great. So it was always going to be an uphill struggle. So Mr. Perfect is unemployed. He, he doesn't seem to find a new club either, despite having these amazing attributes. It might be because his reputation is so low. We could put his reputation to the highest possible thing, but then he's just going to move to a really big club straight away, and that's a bit boring. We want him to... Wait, this experiment's all about the perfect manager in non-league. So we're going to have a third attempt and see what happens. But this time we're going to change things up. It obviously wasn't working for him at Kettering. So let's move him to his beloved Oxford City. Obviously, in a parallel universe, he was the most incredible player ever playing for Oxford City. So let's, let's make him manager of Oxford City and see what happens. Just like Kettering, they are predicted to finish bottom, but this is the National League South, remember. Ah, not the best season. 19th in the league, 41 points for Oxford City from 42 games. They still have Mr. Perfect in charge because remember they were expected to finish bottom of the table but he has not had a, an amazing impact on this club, has he? Let's look at his transfers. So he's signed quite a lot of, lot of free transfers. Obviously there's no money to spend. Lots of loan players from Football League teams as well. As you can see there, TJ Bramble. Um, a couple of players coming in from other non-league teams. But it hasn't gone to plan in terms of how we thought this experiment would go. I'm sure a lot of you were thinking, yes, the perfect manager, stick him in a non-league team, he'll get them promoted to the Premier League. But no, when you don't have the facilities, it's hard. It really is. So that's an interesting learning point from this experiment. Even with the most perfect manager in terms of his attributes, content, continental pro license, playing modern Gagan press, or maybe he needs to play 4-4-2 and just lump it. Perhaps that's what, he's, what he needs to do in this in this league. I don't know. Perhaps he's just too good for this league. Well, that's a little bit better. Second season in charge. He's got them up to 11th place. Not bad at all, considering where they are expected to finish. So that's much improved performance from him. Hopefully can push on in the third season. Ah, no. He is sacked again. <laughs> he's unemployed. Poor old Mr. Perfect. It's just not working for him. So Oxford City finished 18th this year. Uh, they sacked Mr. Perfect in October 2021. I presume he was having a dreadful start to the season again. He just doesn't seem to be able to last more than two seasons, does he? Really bad start to the season. They won one game 4-1, but other than that, it's mainly defeats with a, with a handful of draws. He was sacked in October, around about here. So he'd won a few games, but they must have been in the bottom three at that point. Now, I think it's obvious that we know Mr. Perfect can keep a, a club up in his first two seasons. In the third season, it looks like he could get them relegated. But let's move him to another non-league team. Let's move him to a team with resources, with a, with a, with some morale. A team like Dulwich Hamlet, where they've almost got promoted. They finished second. Let's, let's change things up a bit. It's not going to plan in, t in terms of getting a team expected to finish bottom of the league 
all the way up the divisions or even out of the first division. It's just, it's almost impossible because there's no resources, the players aren't there. You can have the most perfect manager ever and they still wouldn't be able to win the league with the worst team. In. And that's obvious. That's what we've we've deduced. So let's move into Dulwich Hamlet next season and see how, get, see how he gets on. He's done it. Mr. Perfect has won the league with Dulwich Hamlet. At the start of the season, I think they were predicted to finish around, well, second according to this. It does change throughout the season, but it was around about that. And he's won it. He's won the league. I'm, I'm so pleased for him. So with the resources, with the right players, I suppose you could, maybe you could argue if if you're at a top club expected to finish in the top three, anyone could be in charge and they should finish towards the top of the table. But that's that's not always the case, is it? So he's actually gone up to one star reputation now after winning the National League South. And we're going to see how he performs in the National League next year. We'll just have a quick look at the transfers he made. So lots of free transfers again, lots of players going out. Now, maybe with a manager with amazing attributes, he's more likely to attract players, possibly. I, d I don't know. He's got a fairly big squad, as you can see there. More money to play around with, I'm sure. Still a, a semi-pro team, because as you can see, there's lots of players on non-contracts. -co um, so they're not actually earning any money unless they play. They get an appearance fee, as you can see there. Oh, it's not going well for Mr. Perfect. He's been sacked again. It's June 2024, and he was unable to keep Dulwich Hamlet in the National League, although he wasn't actually in charge when they got relegated. He was sacked in February, which I imagine they were in the relegation zone. At that point, they must have been. And yeah, they've been relegated, despite having the top joint top goal scorer in the league. So I assume he, he found this play, signed him. He did sign him this year on free on a free from Reading, so that's a great transfer from Mr. Perfect. But maybe he's too attacking. I've made him quite an attacking manager, attributes wise. So maybe maybe that's the problem. I don't know. Loads of free transfers again this season. A few loan transfers as well. But yeah, Mr. Perfect has been sacked again. For the second time in this particular career which is unfortunate now i'm thinking we need to move him to just a national league team see how he gets on in the national league with a team i, I don't know let's we'll move him anyway we'll move him somewhere else i've moved him to barnet a team with a bit of history i think they've been in the football league but they've actually been relegated to the national league south i thought we'd probably better put him back in the national league south but had a good team that's just been relegated from the national league see if he can get them promoted back to the National League. So that's what I decided to go for in the end. However, he just about missed out on promotion. He finished second in the league, three points behind Woking, and unfortunately bottled it in the playoffs. Uh, they finished, I think they got to the semi-final, yep, and lost on penalties against Billericay, which is horrible. Uh, and Hemel Hempstead ended up getting promoted. But he's still at the club, so I presume they're going to keep him for his second season in the National League South with Barnet. So it's 2026, June 2026. He's still manager of Barnet, but how did he get on with them this year? He's won. He's won the league again for the second time he's won the league. So he's won it with Dulwich Hamlet, who finished eighth this season, by the way. And he's also won it with Barnet. He completely romped to victory. 12 points clear of Billy Rookie Town, and he's back into the National League. So he's obviously a good manager when he's got the resources to be a good manager, but you could say that about a lot of people. I don't know. I don't know what you were expecting from this experiment. I don't know if you expected him to win the league with Kettering or Oxford City. Maybe you did, but he didn't. It, he just wasn't. It just wasn't good enough. But he has managed to win the league twice now, the National League South twice. So we'll see how he gets on in the National League for a second time. Well, this is very impressive. He finished second and only just missed out on promotion. Ninety-eight points, three points behind Boston United. So he won the National League South last year, and this year almost got promoted to the Football League. So he's obviously a good manager. He knows what he's doing. He signed a player who's got scored 44 goals this season on loan from Coventry City. So he's obviously, he's either made a link with Coventry or he's just been able to get hold of a really good loan player who scored the most goals by a long distance, uh, highest average rating as well, loads of Man of the Match awards. And he was so close to getting promoted. He lost the player final 3-2 against Carlisle in the end, which is just... Horrible. Horrible to lose in those circumstances. But that is a really good season for Mr. Perfect at Barnet. He's up to one and a half star reputation now because he's developing a reputation. 
So if he does get sacked again, maybe he can find a club by himself. Although I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe he's too good. Maybe most uh, clubs in the non-league, for example, uh, just wouldn't go for him because they just don't think he would ever join them. So I might just have to move him around. But he's put together a really good team. You know, they're a full-time team. They're, they're paying wages. Proper wage. I think they're full-time anyway. They must be, mustn't they? Considering all the wages that they are paying. Uh, so maybe they'll go up next year. Let's Let's find out. June 2028, and he's still at Barnet. That's a good sign, but how has he got on? He's finished second again. He's finished second again, and he's failed to get promotion. This time, eight points behind Stockport. But in the playoffs, he was knocked out on penalties against Bradford City in the semi-final. That is, that is harsh as well. So he keeps bottling it in playoffs, doesn't he? He's won the National League South twice, but now he's bottled it twice in the National League playoffs. Poor old Mr. Perfect. It's just not going. It's not going perfectly for him, unfortunately. I'm afraid to say he's been sacked again. After four years at Barnet, he has been sacked, and hasn't lasted another season. Unfortunately, they finished 18th in the end. It's not great. He was sacked in November, 11th of November. So yeah, not good. What do we do now? I've moved him to Salford City, a club that we know has money. Well, they did have money. In real life, obviously, they've had some very successful times lately. But they were actually relegated to the National League North. So they went up to their League 2, of course, uh, and now been relegated to the National League North. But they have just been promoted again, winning the final in the playoffs 2-1. So we're going to move him here. Well, I have moved him here. And we'll see how he gets on in the National League again. Seventh. Not a bad start to life back in the National League for Salford City, thanks to Mr. Perfect. It's not bad at all. Uh, he didn't spend. I don't. I mean, I don't know if they have have any money on this. They've only got okay finances. Let's just have a quick look. There's their finances. Five uh, half a million, which is not bad for a non-league team. I don't think they are a professional club. That's the wage budget, as you can see there. I mean, who's the owners? Wayne Carter. Is he the real life owner? I thought it was a loads of Man United players. Is this guy like the main guy? I don't know. I, perhaps they sold the club. I have no idea. But either way, he's had an okay season with Salford City. And in the second season, he's just missed out on goal difference against his old club, Barnet. They've got up to the Football League. That is really... The, the game, the, this universe is trolling Mr. Perfect. He's just not having... He's just so close. So close, but not quite close enough. And in the end, they lost in the playoff semi-final against Accrington, which is a shame. Uh, but... He's still at the club. He's still here. That's the main thing, I suppose. And hopefully next season he can push on. But I wouldn't be surprised if he flops again because that seems to be the pattern. Two or three really good seasons and then completely complete disaster. It just seems to happen every single time. And it's happened again. Mr. Perfect finds himself unemployed once more. Sacked by fault Salford City after finishing 13th this year. I think he was sacked before the end of the season, but 13th place. How did they go from 2nd to 13th? What's happened there? Let's have a look at the manager history. So he was sacked in April. So, yeah, he was sacked at the end of the season. The new guys come in. Ah, what is happening? Why is it not working for him? Spent £2,400 this, this season. He sold a player for 46500 Maybe that was a problem, losing a key player, possibly. I don't know. But yeah, he's, he's sacked again. I guess, to be fair, managers are sacked all the time. But I was hoping for better from Mr. Perfect. I thought clubs would respect him. And we found out with that 2099 contract at Kettering, that didn't even work. That didn't stop them from sacking him. They still sacked him. So that, that technique obviously didn't work. Anyway, I've moved him to Bradford City now, who finished second in the National League this year. Now, they have uh, they almost got... Uh, got promoted via the playoffs as well now obviously a club with lots of football league history i thought we'd give him a go at a team that have a big stadium have the resources probably spending money uh, let's just look at their finances they're actually in debt <laughs> that's worse than solver but they've got a bigger wage budget as you can see there interestingly arnold has moved they are he's moved from uh, on a free to aldershot in the end anyway let's concentrate on mr perfect and bradford city He's done it. He's made it to the Football League with Bradford City comfortably in the end. 10 points clear of second place Cheltenham. I'm delighted for him. At last, he's managed it. He's into the Football League. He deserves that. Let's just have a quick look at his transfer history. So no money spent either. He's, he's, he's hardly spent any money. He's not had money to spend, I suppose. But yeah, very good season for him. 
you might, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the goals scored or anything like that over the summer's goal difference. We've not really looked at goals scored, I suppose. But this season, he managed to get his, Bradford says he scored 81 goals, which was the best in the league. And defensively, the best in the league as well. But having looked at other seasons, it's not always been that way. He's, he's tended to score goals and at other times there's been defensive issues. But yeah, I think he's got a system working now. Let's just have a look at the most recent game if we can. And so he's played. It looks like a 4-5-1, doesn't it? I'm looking at the wrong team. <laughs> this is the team. 4-4-1-1, which is his preferred formation. It seems to work for him overall. And most of the time. Other times it doesn't, obviously. But most of the time it has worked. I think he's had more successful seasons than unsuccessful seasons. But yeah, his preferred formation, 4-4-1-1. Standard playing style, still with the Gagan Press style, seems to be working for him. Is there a way to look at all the, the like his stats or anything? Ah, oh, here we go. So, Klaus managed five. Longest time at the club was obviously with Barnett. He's bought 72 players worth eleven and a half thousand pounds. He sold. He's made a healthy profit, as you can see there. He, uh, 53 games at Brent. Overall, 664 games, 321 wins, 147 draws, 196 defeats. Now, he scored 1,095 with a, a goal difference of 286. So he's, he has conceded a lot of goals. He's won a cup. He has... He's won... What, what, what did he win? Let's have a quick look. So he obviously won the, the Vanarama National League this year. And he won the English FA Trophy with Barnet. Not bad at all. So he won the double that year. I haven't been concentrating on the cups. It's all been, all been about the uh, the leagues. But that's a good win. That's a good good trophy to win. So he's picked up a few few competitions, three league wins, and a cup win, and three promotions in total. As you can see, they're forty eight percent win percentage. It's not bad. He's not a dreadful manager. He's done well. He's he's been promoted three times. He's won a cup. He's won more games than easily won more games than he's lost. He's got a, a healthy goal difference, as you can see there. I think man, teams just need to keep the faith with him when he has one sort of dodgy season. Just keep the faith with him. But Bradford City have not kept the faith with Mr. Perfect. He has been sacked again. It's now June 2034 and he was sacked, passed the way into the League, the league 2 season. He was sacked in November, unfortunately, after... Uh, it's an OK start. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five wins... Six wins, maybe uh, six wins before he was sacked. But there are there are a lot of defeats there. Uh, they did end up surviving. They finished fifteenth, but he's been sacked again. And I'm going to move him to Aldershot. I've just been relegated. You might say, well, why don't you just move him to a team in the League Two? He's made it to League Two. Perhaps he deserves. But this video is all about non-league, isn't it? I want to move him back to the non-league. See if he can find a club where he can carry them up a few divisions. Aldershot probably will be tricky, but. They might still have they sold have they sold the really good player? I think they have. I think they've sold sold the uh Arnold chap. Where is Arnold? George Arnold. He's moved to Bath. On a free. Bizarre. But yeah, why has he dropped down to the National League South? He's ripping it up in the National League, wasn't he? Oh no, it was the National League. No, it was the National League he was doing well in, I think. Anyway, we're gonna move him to Aldershot, a team that have just been relegated, see if he can get them back into the top flight. And he's just missed out. Only just 1-0 defeat in the playoff final with Aldershot. One point behind Stafford who have got promoted to the Football League. That's unfortunate. He was probably expected to get promoted straight away. He's expected to finish second. So he's finished where he was expected to finish. Spent a bit of money. Sold a player for quite a bit of money at this level. And this was his squad. And is he still playing the same formation? Let's have a look at the, the playoff semi-final to start with. Uh... Yeah, four four one one. That I mean, that's the formation. Maybe, maybe if we change the formation for him or change something like that, it could change. I don't know. There's so much we could fiddle around with to to help him. But I think the overriding conclusion is you can have a perfect manager of the, the best attributes, but there's other other factors that come into play. When you've got the perfect player and Mr. Perfect playing for Oxford City, that was enough. To get them promoted all the way to the top flight. They obviously had the TV money at that stage. And they transformed themselves into the, one of the biggest teams in England. The biggest team in England at one point. But with a manager it's different. We were hoping for him to get 
a club promoted up the leagues. But that hasn't happened. I'm sure some of you will say, oh, change change the money. Give give Aldershot money. But then we're changing the experiment. This experiment was just about creating a perfect player and allowing that to be the variable in this experiment. I didn't want to change anything else. I've not boosted the facilities or the finances. We've not given him a massive wage budget or anything. We've just allowed him to manage. And it just, unfortunately, it hasn't worked. I wouldn't say it's a failed experiment. It's not failed. We've concluded that this method of putting a perfect player, at a, a perfect manager at a club, just, it doesn't quite work. He seems to have a couple good seasons, almost gets promoted and then flops. Anyway, we'll see how he gets on in his next season. Ah, uh, it's, it's not it's not worked out again. He's been sacked by Aldershot and it's just a similar pattern. It's always a similar pattern. A good season or two good seasons and then a, a really bad season. For 13th they finished in the end. They got rid of Mr. Perfect uh, back in September. Like a long, they had no patience there. He had a bad start to the season. It just is so similar. It's such a weird pattern. Like look at the beginning of the seasons. Like the good seasons and the bad seasons. Oh, we're just looking at older shot. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, if we, I, I wish I could do that for Mr. Perfect. But we had at each club, you know, a decent season, then a bad season. He got sacked. Like a really bad start, and then we move him to another club. A, a year or two of really positive stuff, either getting promoted, winning a cup, but then the start of one season, losing a few games, the club just get rid of him straight away. They've got no patience with Mr. Perfect, which just seems bizarre. And it's a weird pattern. That, it, that is, is strange. I think we're going to have to end it there. It's just not happening for him. We have to throw other variables into play, I think, to get a club out of non-league with Mr. Perfect. Yes, he got a club out of non-league. He got Bradford City up to League 2, but he was probably going to get them relegated again if he stayed with them. And we could carry this on. We could pro Eventually, we might find a club, but we might get lucky and find a club that has a bit of money in non-league, maybe a Billerookie town or, or someone like that that happens to have a rich owner come in, and then he's got a chance. But then it's not just because of him. There's other things. So I, I, it's been an interesting experiment, like seeing him manage six different non-league clubs. That's been quite unique for for my experiments sort of moving someone around so much. But yeah, it's not gone how we thought it would go, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's just have a look at his overall stats in the end then. So 754 games managed, which is a lot. You know, he's, how old is he now? He's 36. He's been managing since the age of 19. So 17 seasons or 17 years. And he's got a very good positive goal difference, a decent win percentage, 48%. He's won a cup. He's... One, three leagues. I could do a part two where we just see how he gets on at a Premier League club, but I think it's going to be predictable. He'll, he'll do well. You know, he will do well. He'll have money to spend and he should do well. But this experiment is all about seeing how he got on at a non-league club. And yeah, it's not, it's, it's been okay. He's got one team into the Football League and he's he's done quite well with certain teams. Like he could be a, non, a really good non-league manager now, carrying on. He doesn't seem to find a club by himself though. And that's probably because his attributes are too strong. I suppose the, the thought where it's a postcode lottery comes into play here. You could be a really gifted person in any field, but you just don't get the right opportunity. Mr. Perfect should really be employed by a top club with these attributes. He's a perfect manager. But just think about maybe someone born in the slums of Peru who, who might be a genius. He might be someone or she might be someone that has the cure for cancer or something dramatic, can end the climate crisis. But they might be born in the wrong place. They just don't have the opportunities in life. Even in rich countries, there's a lot of people that don't have the opportunities in life because they, it's their postcode lottery. Maybe this isn't quite the case for Mr. Perfect. That's a bit of an extreme to go to. But, but you get what I'm getting at there. I mean, he just was in a club in clubs that didn't quite have the amazing resources that he deserved uh, and uh, unfortunately wasn't as successful as we hoped he would be. But I think we'll end it there. If you've enjoyed it, I know it's not quite what you probably expected when you clicked on this video, but not everything turns out that way with these sorts of experiments. I've, I must say I've done quite a few experiments in the past, past which have been failures really and I've not uploaded them. But then I thought, well, this isn't a failure it's just not gone how he wanted it to go. We, we wanted him to be 
a really successful manager and get a team from the National League South all the way up to the, the Football League, up to the Premier League and win things. And that's what we wanted to happen. But you don't always get what you want, do you? That's life. That's a bit of a, a sad ending, I suppose, I'm afraid. But but there we go. If you've got any ideas for future experiments, then stick them in the comment section below. I don't know if we're going to do any more perfect player or manager experiments. I might do at some point. I might move on to some new things. Um, I do need to do some sort of Let's Play series as well at some point. But I've been enjoying these experiments, and I'm glad you have as well. But until next time, enjoy FM20, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.